Taylor Marshall about Elijah Angel killed 450 false prophet Angel let's watch him Angel okay Angel Angel where are you okay bye bye okay let's watch it Angel so here is the clip again and then we'll do some commentary on what we have just read here is Bishop Aaron the power is doing the, the best thing that prophets ever done in Israel but in the immediate wake of them the tiny whispering voice says it's time for your successor Elijah you're fired why is he being fired could it have something to do with that extraordinary violence he showed after the beautiful prophetic manifestation on Mount Carmel. No, no. And here's the problem. All right, so I opened up today saying we're going to be talking about death penalty and ecumenism. If you take the perspective since the 1960s and you, and you, you believe that Pope Francis can change morality, change dogma, change doctrine. Uh, you now have to hold, currently, that the death penalty is morally inadmissible. It's not admissible. This is the teaching of Francis Bergoglio. Whereas we have about a dozen popes in history who teach that the death penalty can be used in a morally upright way. It actually goes back to God's covenant with Noah in which God says that if a man purposely murders another man, his blood is required of him. He institutes the death penalty. God institutes a death penalty uh, immediately after the flood with Noah. But if you have to live in a world or you have to live in a Catholic theology where the death penalty is inadmissible, how do you read the passage we just read from 3 Kings where Elias his prophetic mission is validated by fire falling from heaven onto a sacrifice. And then he, he rounds up and he himself personally kills 450 prophets, false prophets of Baal. Imagine how long, how physically difficult it would be to kill 450 people. Let's just think about that for a moment. It's a lot of bodies. It's a lot of killing. It's a lot of blood. And we have to ask ourselves, is the one true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, did he approve of those 450 killings or not? I think if you take the Pope Francis Bergoglio point of view, you have to say God did not approve of the 450 killings of the false prophets. And that's definitely the read that Bishop Barron is suggesting to us. The problem with that is it just doesn't fit the words of Scripture. Or then God gives Elias a second miracle, and then Scripture specifically said God's hand is upon Elias, and then later God takes Elias up in a chariot of fire and allows Elias to share his spirit, a double spirit of prophetic ministry on his successor, Eliseus or Elisha. You see, when you read scripture, God is pleased with what Elijah, Elijah the prophet is doing. Now you may say to yourself living in the third millennium, well, man, killing 450 false prophets, it seems like a lot of blood, seems violent, seems unnecessary. I don't know if this is humane, but you have to remember in the Old Testament, false prophets always received the death penalty. Let me repeat this. God commanded Moses to institute in the Old Testament, Israel, false prophets were to receive the death penalty. This is not an idea that Elias thought up by himself and said, what should I do with all these false prophets? I mean, we could put them in prison. We could put them in a remedial course. We could kill them. Yeah, I think we'll kill them. No, Elias the prophet was obeying the words of Scripture. 
Elias the prophet was obeying Moses by putting to death the false prophets. It doesn't matter if there's one false prophet, 450 false prophets, or 4,500 false prophets. It is the will of God as taught by Moses in the Old Testament economy. False prophets receive the death penalty. Why is it such a big deal? We may think, well, I mean, golly, I mean, they're, they're not like murdering and raping people. In a way, they're murdering and raping souls. They're teaching the people of Israel to abandon the true God, to abandon the Ten Commandments, to abandon the true morality and ethics that God has taught, and to chase after demons. The gods of the nations, the gods of the Gentiles are demons, says Psalm 95. You see, Thomas Aquinas says killing the soul by sending it to hell is worse than killing the body. And you have to ask yourself today, do you believe that personally? Would it? What's worse? Someone who leads you into mortal sin so that you lose your soul and go to hell for eternity or someone who kills your body, which is worse? Clearly the former. Clearly those who lead us into mortal sin and the false prophets were doing exactly that and Elias justly and righteously killed 450 prophets and God gave him another miracle and God put his hand upon him immediately after he did that. And now we have to ask ourselves, is Francis right? Is the death penalty morally inadmissible? Because if Francis is right, we've got to totally go back and reread and refashion 3 Kings chapter 18 as Bishop Barron has just done. I am not going to go and revise and remix and reshape Third Kings and the story of Elias the prophet to fit the modern woke agenda or to fit the novel interpretation of Francis Bergoglio. We must follow sacred scripture, sacred tradition, and the magisterium. And if a pope departs from the magisterium, that's on him. See, scripture, tradition, and the magisterium, they don't change. They don't reverse themselves. Now, let's talk about ecumenism. Ever since the 1960s, because of Dignitatis Humanae and Eterni, uh, no, uh, Nostra Aetate, two documents in Vatican II, there's been this idea that we as Catholics should go and worship with non-Catholics in their liturgies in their rites. So before, even if you went into a non-Catholic church, synagogue, mosque, that was a sin just to go inside. Did you know that? To go to their services and to pray with them, mortal sin. Catholics were only allowed to worship in Catholic liturgies that were approved by the Catholic Church and by the Pope. You couldn't go to a Lutheran service and participate because you don't have the same faith as a Lutheran. You couldn't go into a mosque and pray because you don't have the same faith as the Mohammedan. You can't go into a synagogue and pray because you don't have the same faith as your Jewish friend. But since the 1960s, you know, we've got to get together with all these world religions. We saw this in 1986 with the uh, Prayer for Peace rally that John Paul II hosted. You got the Dalai Lama worshiping a, a Buddha on a tabernacle and an altar in Assisi. All these world religions. You got the Native American smoking peace pipes. All doing this in a Catholic church, in a Catholic complex together. And so again, you take that worldview, that theology, and you go back into Third Kings and Elijah the, and Elijah the prophet, it doesn't fit. If you took Vatican II practice into the story of Elijah, Elijah the prophet should have been, hey, all you false prophets, you think Baal is God, and I think Yahweh is God, so why don't we have a conference? Uh, you guys get to speak, send your scholars, I'll have me, I'll give a talk, we'll do a dialogue, we'll let people listen, 
You know, maybe y'all will do a bail liturgy and I'll participate in somehow, or y'all can put, you know, you can sacrifice an animal and put some of that blood on me in the name of Baal, and then I can do mine and I'll do some of my sacrifice for you. We can all be in ecumenical dialogue. No, <laughs> that is not the God of the Bible. God says, I am a jealous God. Does that offend you? God shares his glory, his worship, and his honor with no other God because the gods of the Gentiles are demons. God does not want his children worshiping demons or participating in false worship, false theology, false liturgy. God loves us. He wants us to worship, as Jesus says, in spirit and in truth. You must be worshiping in the Holy Spirit and you must be worshiping in truth. And if you aren't doing that, that's not what God wants for you. This whole idea that we Catholics need to go to Lutheran prayer services and uh, have Methodist ministers come in and bless us and preach to us and talk to us, or that uh, Francis is going to stand on a, on a stage with Protestants and, and everyone's going to bless together. No, that's not it. So. I think Bishop Barron is in a bind here, right? He, he, has, he has to submit himself to, okay, death penalty is bad and ecumenical dialogue is good. And then you read the story in 3 Kings chapter 18 of Elias the prophet and death penalty is good here and ecumenical dialogue is bad. It's like, what do we do? It doesn't work. So Bishop Barron said, well, God was firing Elias the prophet. That's why God brought in a successor to Elias the prophet. But if you read 3 Kings, that's not it. And if he was firing Elias the prophet, why is it that when our Lord Jesus Christ transfigured, there's Moses on one side and Elias on the other. And when Christ is on the cross and he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, the people say he's calling for Elias. He's calling for Elias. Now they were wrong. But they thought Christ was invoking. By the way, People who say you shouldn't invoke saints. All the Jews at the foot of the cross thought Jesus was invoking a saint, Elias the prophet. It's an interesting apologetics angle next time you're in a, a dialogue with Protestants. So I think with Bishop Barron, he's trying to take a square peg, which is the ecumenical anti-death penalty version of Catholicism and place it into the biblical round hole. And it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. And that's why I'm a traditional Catholic. And that's why I encourage you to be a traditional Catholic. You see, I don't interpret the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Church Fathers, the medieval era, the Counter-Reformation. I don't interpret all that in light of now and Pope Francis and the Church of what's going on now. I interpret our present moment in light of everything that came before. You see, a traditionalist which is what I am, what I hope you to be, interprets the present moment in light of tradition of what came before. The modernist interprets everything that came before in light of now. So they'll say, I don't know, like, how are we going to interpret Adam and Eve? Well, let's interpret that in, in, in what's going on now, our modern period. Okay, it was kind of this, like evolutionary monkey thing, you know, or Jesus you know, turned, uh, he, he multiplied the loaves and the fishes. Well, nowadays we don't really believe in that kind of stuff, so I'm just going to go and interpret that as everybody share their lunch. No. Tradition judges us. We don't judge tradition. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? All right, well, thanks for watching. Make sure you're praying the rosary every single day so you're meditating on Scripture. The rosary is Bible on beads. Make sure you pray your rosary every blessed day and you will grow closer to our Lord through Our Lady. Do it. Uh, what else? Read your Bible every day. I'm reading my Bible every day. You can listen to it on audio. If you are a Patreon supporter of mine, um, I put files up there that you use in an app and you can listen to the Dewey Rames Bible. You know, I've got... Uh, Gospels on there. I've got Paul's epistles. Um, I've got Genesis, I believe, on there. Exodus, uh, the Psalms. All of that I've placed over there to say thank you to the Patreon patrons. So if you want to support my channel, support my work, and support my writings, 
Go to patreon.com forward slash DR Table Marshall. Also send you signed books. And just yesterday, I released the cover of my new book, Antichrist and Apocalypse. It's a commentary in the book of Revelation and the end times from a Catholic point of view. And I will be releasing some free chapters and some audiobook version chapters uh, to Patreon patrons. So if you already are a Patreon patron, look for those in the coming week or so. And if you want to get in on that, go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. One of the very many benefits of being a patron. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, God bless you. We should pray the uh, Hail Mary here at the end before we sign off. So, oremus nomini patris et fidi et spiritus sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in moleribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, nunc editor mortis nostre. Amen. St. Elias, pray for us. Nomini patris et fidi, spiritus sancti. Amen. Thanks for watching. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty, which, by the way, was today's gospel in the traditional Latin Mass. God bless and Godspeed. Angel, you like it, Angel? Let's watch it again, okay, Angel? Angel, huh? Let's watch it. You like it? Huh? Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's rewind it. Okay? Okay, Angel. Okay, I know you want to watch it. Okay, you're looking at it. Okay, smile. Okay, show your teeth, Angel. Show your teeth. Angel, show your teeth. Okay, bye now. <laughs>